His name is I-R-A, Ira, but the, uh, we always grew up calling him Ari. We never did pronounce his name correctly growing up. And my wife didn't know until we had probably been married a year that she thought his name was spelled R period E period as initials. She said, what does R-E stand for? I said, well, it's not really R-E, it's Ira. We just call him Ari. That's the, the mountain slang lazy term to, to uh, pronounce it. So that was something he was known for in the, in the family. Oh, yes, Ari. within the family and the neighborhood, he was known as Ari growing up until he got out of high school and went to college. And then his name began to be pronounced correctly. I was uh, six years older than Ira. He was the baby of the family. And that's a lesson he learned early on in life, and he never forgot it. He used it uh, his, through his childhood and adulthood to the maximum, and uh, uh, he knew it, and he really he kind of felt real proud that he was able to do that. What, what kind of person was, was your brother? I mean, kind of tell me what he loved, what he you know, did in his life, that kind of thing. Well, growing up and in high school, I can remember he had two, maybe three girlfriends. But as he proceeded, went on to college, and he got more and more involved in coaching and sports. He uh, did, was a graduate assistant at Cumberland College upon his graduation. He started taking graduate classes at Union College, but Dr. Boswell, who was president of Cumberland College, allowed him to be a graduate assistant to Coach Ken Trivett, who was the head coach. And he developed such a passion for sports in general, not just basketball. So when he graduated, he started his first year teaching and coaching at the old MC Napier High School. And he was assistant coach in football, baseball, and freshman coach in basketball. And he taught there for one or two years. Then he came to Dills Combs, and he assumed the assistant coaching duties under me, and he was the head baseball coach for a period of time. And then when they consolidated into Perry Central, he was a teacher at Perry Central, and upon maybe, I think it was like maybe 1999, he became the athletic director for Perry County Schools in Perry Central, and he uh, maintained that role until his retirement. And then once he retired, he began getting involved in these sports things. In particular, the, uh, he began the Joby Hall Prep Classic, which he was able to uh, have that for 26 years. And I think we had maybe this past year was the only cancellation that we had to do due to weather. Then he started the Tri-State Sports Incorporated and he would, uh, was beginning to do all-star basketball games for the regions throughout the eastern part of the state, even going down into the 12th region and selecting players from the 12th through the 16th region. He just wanted to showcase these young kids that maybe a college coach didn't get an opportunity to see them play. And uh, so we did that uh, for several years. And in fact, he was going to try to do another one this spring. And uh, then he also began doing some radio shows, and he was still currently doing Mountain Sports Review that he hosted on Thursday nights on the uh, TVS cable. And that reached several thousand people through their cable system. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, for, for a small town guy, you know, from a small community of Perry County, he had a big impact. You know, he reached a lot of people. Yes, he did. He, uh, in fact, much more so than, than I realized, you know. And uh, he started developing uh, the, uh, the theory of covering sports like our older brother uh, started his career in. And he was the editor of the Cat's Paws. And he still does the pregame radio work for the uh, UK Sports Network in football and basketball. And uh, I think he was trying to catch one of his older brothers, you know. He was out to try to catch him and, and be able to sit elbow to elbow with him down in the media room at uh, Rupp Arena. But uh, he just, his first love, I really think, was promoting 
the youth in the eastern Kentucky and the mountains. And, uh, you know, we had players and we, we just felt so blessed to hopefully not make a negative impact on these kids' lives when we were associated with them. But we've had so many that's come back and it, you know, that's what you want to receive out of your occupation. You want to see if you could make a positive influence on children. And I will be first to say through my teaching experience that all begins with the home. We were blessed enough to have kids that had wonderful parents that really uh, provided opportunities for their children, encouraged them, and we just wanted to kind of help that along as best as we could. Just a couple more questions. You know, there's, I know you said that you had a lot of people here last night. I have no doubt the parking lot's going to be full by the time the funeral starts today. And you even said yourself, I didn't realize how many people he impacted, you know, until kind of something like this happens. I mean, that's got to make you a proud older brother, you know, to see that he succeeded in what he was trying to do. Well, I have a, uh, uh, a little story that I'll share that Oscar and I shared together, you know, Especially later in life, I and I both became known when we would be introduced to someone, it would not be this is Harold Combs and this is Joe. This is Oscar Combs' brother Harold. This is Oscar's brother Ira. Well, there was a fellow media member did a story on Ira on his passing and Oscar nor I was never mentioned in the article. And I told Oscar, I said, I can just see Ira. <clears throat> I don't need them anymore like they thought I would need them. And I said he was so proud of his accomplishments and uh, being the baby of the family, he just, I guess that was his way of, uh-huh, I showed you all. But he, he just, he loved life. He, I can't emphasize how much he loved sports and being around that. He, we, through him, I've developed a lot of friends in the media and not near as many as he did. And, you know, we, we've had people, uh, Coach Joe Hall came up yesterday prior to the opening visitation. And, you know, he became so close to Ira, was so honored that Ira would change the name of the Prep Classic to the Joe B. Hall Prep Classic. But that was his way of honoring Coach Hall before he passed, not after, as is in most cases. And, uh, that, you know, he just, he, he wanted to do things. That was our mother in him, to try to please and make people happy. And he was uh, just always wanted it to be a pleasant atmosphere, tell stories, have fun, and anyone that knows him, have a little food along with that, which that's a family trait as well. But, uh, you know, he's my baby brother. I don't know what to, what the future holds, but uh, he will be missed by many. And I, like I said, there was people that came through last night that I had no idea who they were, but they would share. I really enjoyed watching him on his TV show or listening to his call-in radio show. So he will be very, very proud, but more than proud, he will be pleased that he made a positive feeling to people that knew him. Is there anything else you want to add or want to say? You did a great job. Well, you know, it's like I say, he, uh, he just wanted to be thought of well, that he was doing something that people enjoyed and that he could uh, be a part of it. But I want to thank the people that enjoyed watching him his peers in the media that he becomes so close to. And, you know, I, I would love to start naming names, but he would not want me to leave anyone out. And uh, so I, I, I just want them all to know how much Oscar and I appreciate what they meant to him, what they did for him. And uh, I want to share one final thought that Oscar and I thought, if Iro were here and he could be a part of this, when Coach Hall came up yesterday, I said, now, if it had been Ira, well, we need to set a table up out here in front, and Coach Hall and I will sign some autographs as they come in for the viewing. I, that was his thought process, you know. But uh, 
I think I can safely say, and this is kind of a cliche, there'll never be another one like him. Well, he was unique. He was uh, his own person. He loved Eastern Kentucky high school athletics. He loved promoting kids from Eastern Kentucky. It was always deep in his heart to challenge the kids that he taught and coached to chase their dreams, to become something, and more importantly, to remember the roots and to make the mountains proud. And I know that you know your brother Harold said, and I'm sure you would you know admit this too, that he got a lot of inspiration from his older siblings. I mean, especially you. You know, you you guys are kind of in the same business. Well, yeah, I started a little bit older than him because he was a school teacher, coach, administrator, and I think he always loved being more involved and maybe being a little bit opinionated about sports. So when he got through his earlier years of coaching and teaching, he got into uh, the sports aspect of journalism, radio, and television, and he really, really loved it. What, um, I mean, did you, I would assume you guys probably talked a lot and had a lot of conversations about the work that you both did. I mean, did, was, did that happen a lot? Yeah, he, uh, he was always interested in uh, going to the very top. He was interested in getting the big interview, and he was never intimidated. I mean, sometimes people, particularly from the mountains, as I grew up, uh, when I was going to school, uh, for many, many years I was timid. I, I'd heard that people from Eastern Kentucky didn't put their clothes on the same way as people outside Appalachia. And uh, for that reason, it, it was a little bit uh, of a challenge for me to go and to prove that I belong to the rest of the world as well as the mountains. I'm glad that I never forgot my roots because if it hadn't been for the mountains, I don't think he or I, either one, would have enjoyed what we have enjoyed throughout our life. And, you know, about, you know, you talked about him trying to make it to the top and make that big impact, you know, outside of the mountains. I know that after his passing, the NCAA president, you know, Coach Calipari, you know, media outlets from all over, you know, remarked about him. You know what I mean? That, you know, in a sense, do you think he succeeded in what he wanted to oh, do? Oh, without question. Uh, you know, I mean, he wasn't afraid to walk up to a Pete Rose and say, hi, I'm Ira Cones. I'd like to do this interview with you. And a lot of people you know, are just intimidated by the structure of big time. And he was never that way. He attended Final Fours, NCAA tournaments, uh, bowl games, just whatever sporting event there was, he always liked to do it. In, in, a, in moments like this, you know, they can be sad and that sort of thing, but they can also be, I think, wonderful in the sense because you see how many people that person impacted or knew or, you know, had a positive you know, light on, do you feel that? Well, you know, you just you mentioned Mark Emmert issued a statement to the university, but I think more impressive than that is watch the everyday person walk through here yesterday evening. Uh, just everyday mountain people and how it impact their lives. And I think it's much more important for him to impact his people's lives than just a celebrity's life. I know that next you know, next sports season, next basketball season especially will probably be tough, you know, kind of the first one without him. Do you hope to, you know, kind of keep his memory going and honor him, you know, and all the things that you well, have to? Well, of course. I mean, you know, there's still a tournament left this year, and he'll be remembered at the next game Kentucky plays. And, uh, you know, he, he will never die in our hearts and memories. But, and I don't think he will for the people of eastern Kentucky. I mean, I, I tried to get him a few years ago to move down to central Kentucky. And, he just shook his head. He said, no, no, sis, I want to be where I'm at right now. He loved it more than anything. Just lastly, um, you know, this is a tragedy. Nobody wanted something like this to happen. But the fact that he was where he was and he was doing what he did, I mean, do you find comfort in that? You know, he was doing what he loved? Yeah, uh, uh, it, it's so much more heartwarming to know that his last few seconds were about to be the last few seconds that he would enjoy the rest of his life. and. It, it meant a lot for him to be uh, getting ready to attend a University of Kentucky game and cover it because that's what he always loved.